Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zebra Nation Plays Endless Space 2 the beta. The episodes are rolling hot and heavy, fast and furious. Uh, we're starting to get into battle time, into war zone, into conflict central. We got fleets moving around like crazy. We got enemies on all sides. Got a some sort of uh, siege going on up here. So we got we got lots of problems, um, and to deal with these problems, we need new ships. We need better ships. We need battleships. Take a look at this. This one says this one is calls itself a battleship, which is cool. I guess I didn't know I was building battleships, but I guess I am building battleships. So, um. Let's edit this puppy. Ship design. So that's your basic battleship. No, I think we'll we'll let them keep their basic battleship, and then I'll just create a new kind of ship. Name it um, Battle Cruiser. Oh. Battle Cruiser Operational Commander. Battle Cruise Cruiser. All right, hull type. Sopron class. There we go. Look at that, man. That is like... It's a fierce-looking ship. It almost looks like an attack submarine, which is cool. Alright, so what do we got here? We got one engine port. One, two, three dedicated attack ports. One, two dedicated defense ports. And then we have one that could be attack or defense, and one that could be defense or... Um, upgrade module so first things first let's upgrade the engines this is going to be an all upgrade vessel upgrade the shields um, we're not looking hot on armor but we've got level 2 armor we'll add that in of course weapons we only have these level 2 lasers so we'll add Laser, laser, do we want to add a torpedo or another laser? Um, so I could put the torpedoes up here and let the torpedoes fire sort of 360, or I could save the torpedoes down here for a broadside. But right now our torpedoes are only sort of basic fusion torpedoes, so they're not that great. So I think that's what'll make it a battle cruiser, maybe. Hmm. 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 Or do I want torpedoes? Let's see what the torpedoes look like coming out of the sides. So are they going to show me? Yeah, there we go. So when we get to the broad side, then we start firing torpedoes. That's interesting. Alright, so now what to do with these other ones? More defense or some kind of something or other, some kind of support. Improved absorbive Absorptive shielding support module increases damage from weapons by plus twenty five percent. Hmm. Improve absorptive shielding increased damage from weapons. That's strange. Why would shielding improve your weapons? I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't build ships. So we could add that there. Then we could add either another weapon or another defense. Well, that wouldn't really make this a battle cruiser, would it? I think a battle cruiser should be just like all out weapons. So we'll add another weapon. And then, you know, if we want to make a support ship later, 
we can make a support ship later. Let's see, I'll switch these. Can I switch these two around? No. And then uh, we'll add another shield. There we go. So we got twice the shielding. Three times the weapons. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So what does this bad boy cost? Construction costs. 610 production. 7 titanium. And 14 hyperium. Which, in the long run, is going to deplete us a little, but we're still... We're still doing pretty good, so. Battle Cruiser Operational Captain. Maybe. Did that work? I don't see it on this list. Where did it go? I thought I hit the create button. There it is. Alright. Okay, so. Oh, we also had an improved something else. We had an improved Igirzi class. What does that do for us? Does that just improve them all? So where is the... Oh, yeah. So the patrol ship, mm. Let's see, 29 attack, 43 defense. Yeah, I don't know if that just, wait, what are these here, Kirga? Zoila class. Zolia? What is this? Hmm. Karga is the colonizer. Zoila exploration. Gearzy attacker. So this looks improved to me. I don't remember it having. Or maybe it does. Maybe it did. Okay. So it's got some titanium nuggets here. This must be the improved part. So, like before, it had these three modules and this module. Now it's got three new modules that will probably cost titanium if you want to use them. But you can make like a bad mo ship here with one extra defense attack and either more defense or some kind of support. All right, so let's <clears throat> let's roll with this. Make this a new ship. Enter new ship design. We're going to call this the Predator class attack ship. All right. So I'm going to add one of these upgrades, which I've never really done before. Add shields. Uh, we don't want scanners. We want armor. So that adds to the titanium cost when, once we start putting stuff in there. And then uh, add our weapons. Opal class laser. See that just added more titanium to use that slot. Two titanium per slot apparently. Uh, more lasers, more lasers, oh, wait, those aren't lasers, more lasers, <laughs> there we go, there we go, more lasers, and a torpedo.
All right. So now when this thing gives you a broadside, you're getting toasted, son. All right. So the Predator class, what does this cost us? 543 construction, 22 Hyperion, <laughs> 7 Titanium. Man, that is an expensive little ship. But we're going to create it anyway. Because it should, it should do big things for us on the battlefield. Now, we're still not going to produce a lot of them, you know, because that'll, like, bankrupt our war economy. But, you know, we're going to build a couple of them. So, uh, let's go back to the construction fleet here. Yeah, I guess we'll start with Pegasus. Pegasus we will build. Um, yeah, we'll build the new stuff on Pegasus. So, we'll build... Battle cruiser and a predator. Look at that buyout cost a thousand bucks for a predator. Eleven hundred for a battle cruiser. The predator is almost as expensive. Four hundred eighty-eight, twenty-two, and seven. Five forty-nine, seven and fourteen. It costs more. Man, more Hyperium. And just as much titanium to build a Predator as it does a battle cruiser. That's crazy. So we're not going to be having too many of those flying around. But, you know, we'll have a couple. Then, uh, like, like, gunship and defender. <laughs> there we go. So, man, yeah, we are totally on the war footing now. Let's go to... Karas, how are we doing here? Nice to get Karas 1 colonized. You know, get some population over here. Karas 3 is at its limit, so they should be sending folks over here shortly. Uh, they've got a defender built, so we'll do that. But for them, we'll build a battleship. Let's see what battleship costs. 585 production and 5 titanium. So definitely less. Uh, hmm. Is there anything else they need to build? Because I'm thinking about, you know, the construction of my fleets. Right now I've got a couple of fleets that need battleships but don't necessarily need the smaller ships that go with it. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just build two battleships here. But I don't know that I need that at the moment. So I'm just going to build one battleship and then see what happens from there. And then over here, I think I'll do the same thing at Banny. How's their, uh, how's their production going? They are much lower production. They did just build a gunship, though. So how long would it take them to build a battleship? Five turns, 1.2k, same, same, same. Hmm. All right, so we'll do that. Yeah. So the other fleet will be one, like, uh, mass-produced fleet. So the fleet that comes out of Pegasus... That's going to be like one self-contained fleet with four ships. And then these other fleets, are, they're just going to add to our current fleets. Speaking of which, another gunship down here. Uh, so we'll send that up. We'll send that up here. There we go. These guys, a defender. Um, I don't know, I guess we'll send that up there too. This guy here, where's he going? I might redirect him over here. 
And then last but not least, we have another gunship here. We'll redirect that there. So we got fleets flying everywhere yet again. Look at these battleship, battleship, battle cruiser. We're getting serious about this war business. All right, so we've yeah we finished that. We started that. Okay, so we're all good. Let's move on. Our system here is being barricaded by the enemy fleet. That's to be expected, because we left it undefended. But uh, we're going to have to see how many ships are there by the time we get there. Don't we have a scout ship sitting around somewhere? What's happening here? The Reavers are hanging out in Ayena. That's no good. So we just have enemies all around. What happened up here at Spisa? Hmm. What's this? Erect arcs. Huh. Two wrecked arc. Click to start repairing this arc. It will take zero turns. So this must be the features of one of those uh, one of those races. They have these little arcs and whatever. Oh, what was that? Ecologist party unlocked. The ecologist party will now have enough popular support. So that's five political parties now. We are definitely split up here. More populations. Hisho, Hisho. Rayans, Rayans, and Pilgrims. Hey, we got a final we got a pilgrim boost. That's fine. Production. Not much production happened, just some xenotourism. On Zayan, they're ready to go. All right, now uh, let's move our fleets around, see what happens. Look at all these ships hanging out in our system. Do not like. This is like some sort of convention of federations here. We got the Reavers, got the Iron Fang, got the Doria, and so everybody's here. Everybody's in our system except for us. This is not cool. All right. So they, this fleet is full. No, I got one more ship I can add to this fleet. So I'm sending him down here. And we'll leave her in orbit. Around this fleet. Okay, so stuff's going to pop off here soon. We're going to be fighting it out. All right, the defender is sitting there, so I guess he'll he'll defend this system. And we'll end the turn, get straight to the next turn. It's going to take us probably another two turns before... Uh, before we battle. But that's okay. Now we're going to see what happens in this system when we arrive. We have to fight them all one by one. That's craziness. Crazy talk. But we can afford um, we can afford some losses. We got a bunch of ships on the way. We got some new ships being built. We're going on the war footing here. Negative 132 gold per turn. Usually isn't good, but we're still building system upgrades. Although some of our systems, we've reached that end point that I was worried about. So I'm going to have to start doing some more research so we can build more updates so again this is the sort of strategic balance you gotta you gotta go with you can't just throw everything into the war footing like right now we've done two consecutive at least researches towards military 
I wanted to do a third or a fourth even. Uh, I think I can skip one. I can skip the other classes of ships. We don't really need those right now. And the other one I was going to do was upgrade weapons. Which might be necessary, but I think economy might uh, trump military at this point. So, yeah, I think... Because we, we've already just built these new ships, so there's no reason to have to redesign them again with new weapons. So, what I'll do is I'll research the... Um, some of the money making upgrades and then we can start adding those upgrades and that will get us money on two fronts because we'll be able to get money once the upgrade is complete and then we'll be able to get money from the upgrade itself so let's move our fleets around oops what's this defender where are you going head back here buddy pal all right so we have two fleets here we're going to merge them into one big old fleet and then we'll send that fleet in here that's going to take an extra turn to get there no, no fun all right then we got lots of stuff here event a two-way street has ended so there we go effects minus 10 happiness plus 20 uh dust so that's good Happiness will improve. That's a good thing. More Zvali on Bani. Continue to grow and flourish. The interplanetary transport network is completed on Ayena. Uh, so let's see. What do we want to build here? What can we build? Xeno Industry and Sci-Fi Design School. How's their produ oh their production is real good. Seventy seven production. You know I'm gonna build a settler just for future purposes. Then hmm. <laughs> Do I want to build more fleets? I don't know about that. Don't know about that. Um, I'll go with the Xeno Industrial Architecture or Infrastructure. Even though that's going to add cost to the Empire too, but you know we can't go. We can't have every system building ships because then we'll just bankrupt ourselves real quick doing that. So that's fine. That's fine. And then, uh, alright, we've got a gunship there. The gunship will defend the system. Alright, so next turn we got battles happening. We'll end this turn and get straight to it. How much time we got left? Um, enough. All right. So we should possibly get into a huge battle at Bellatrix, although it looks like one, one or two groups may have left. They saw our fleet coming. All right, two more turns until this Benedict's in the church is completed. Orbit Zahan system with a hero for eight turns. So as you can see, turns are starting to go a little more slowly when you have more stuff in your empire to do. More things to build, more things to research, more uh, systems to have to manage. As you can see here, our influence continues to grow. We've now almost linked up Keras and Pegasus. Pegasus has almost completely uh, enveloped Marope. 
So our home system is starting to exert its control. Iana still isn't doing too much. But uh, that'll change. And these systems are still very small. So this Rotenev system is intriguing to me. I, I don't know if they hide more... Um, more unique things in these systems, but it would be a good idea if they did. So Rotenov 1 is medium tundra colonizable, and that is it. That is it. It has multiple moons. It has Transvine, which is a new resource. And then it has an anomaly, of course. Oops, and then we'll back out of the game and quit forever. Nope, there's a probe chilling there. Whose probe is that? I don't think it's our probe. Somebody's probe. Is there anything to scan here? No, not particularly. Would have been nice. All right, the turn is still rolling. We still can't do anything yet, but soon. There we go. System colonized on Bellatrix, finally. Even though it's in a precarious situation over here. No governor. Um, I guess we need the colonial exchanges more than we need, even though I do want the spin project at some point, but maybe we'll wait until it's necessary. All right, so advance our fleets and see what sort of trouble we get into here. Why are all these guys continuing on to this system? I didn't want that. I wanted them to stop at QR32. Well, I don't know. I don't know. All right, so these guys can merge into a fleet. Uh, one more turn up here, and then we'll have a fleet there. See, you can only have four points on this fleet, so I can't merge these two fleets together. But these guys are here, and I mean, I guess let's fight. Who's here? The sneaky pirates are here. Everybody else bugged out real quick. So these guys are going to feel the wrath. Oh, we didn't set up our, snipe, our battle plan, but... Sniper is good enough, I suppose. Got to be a little more um, patient when you enter into a battle. You can't just charge in with whatever battle plan you think is the right thing to do. Got to actually like look at the enemy and see what they're doing. Make your changes accordingly. So... I do like the cinematic battle system. I just wish I wish it was a little more cinematic, even though the recent battles have been okay. I, um, I don't know if they've improved that at all, but all right. So they've got the advantage on us. Now we're one hundred percent compatible with our battle plan, but still, they've only got two ships. And this should be an easy victory, but, you know, they're going to do maybe a little more damage than they need to. That was a cool entrance. All the ships warping in at first, uh, you know, at the same time. There's our armor locking up. Weapons deploying. Shields up. Flagship at the front of the fleet. You know, they're getting battered by some Hyperion lasers. The Hyperion laser looks pretty cool. They're firing at our flagship. But they're pretty much doomed, charging straight ahead. First ship looks to be destroyed. There's their second prowler in the far distance. Or maybe that was their first prowler. But either way, decisive victory. I'm surprised my leader hasn't gotten more experience points winning these battles. 
There we go. Two prowlers destroyed. Negative damage. Or minimal damage anyway. Defender. Defender took about 100 points of damage. Gunships, no. Oh, our leader. Our flagship leader. Why does he have one hit point? I gotta do something about that. Be maybe because he's been hanging out in this system up here without. doesn't have proper repair facilities. How about now? Could we repair this guy? Oops. Repair the selected ships for 73 gold. Yeah. For show. Sure. Hmm, okay. Could I repair this ship? No. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Is they didn't have any proper repair facilities up there. So he's been cruising around on one hit point in orbit for however long. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> think... Send this defender up here. I can send the patrol ship. Um, no, I don't want to disband. Uh, I can't disband this fleet. I don't want to do that. I just wanted to remove one ship from it. Hmm. Scrap all the selected ships. Nope, nope, nope. All right, so I'll just let that be whatever it is for the time being. Here we go. More Hisho, more Rayans. Hey, Bellatrix finally got a population. So that's when they become a real colony, they get a population. Good job. Good job. Kraz got a second population. That's good. Okay, so these guys are going to defend the system now. Let's look at construction battle cruiser operational, Captain. Going to leave it there until its fleet is complete completed. That's good. That's good. Just end the turn. Just get it over with. All right, so that was fun battle. We got our big ships on the way. They'll do maybe one or two more turns and then call it a, a week. So it'll be interesting to see what new updates they've got planned, when the new updates are going to be released. I don't think it's going to be released on the 19th. That wasn't the impression that I got, but I could be wrong. I, what I got the impression of is that on the 19th, the developers were going to do a stream um, showing off the new features and then it would be released at some point after that but I could be wrong that could be their release date as well I mean I guess it's up to them I mean of course it's up to them but um, I don't know what I was going to say there but in any event I'll be excited to see what the new upgrades are how much of, of what they plan to do how much are they going to actually implement because that's something you need to take into account these days with video games. After the No Man's Sky fiasco, there's our timer. Uh, the No Man's Sky fiasco, they promised a lot of features. Or, rather, they mentioned a lot of features. I'm not one of those people who was like, they promised us that we would be able to do X, Y, and Z. I don't think they did. I think they were just, you know, mostly it was their sort of CEO guy, their project leader, whoever that was, who was sort of answering every question from the press in the affirmative oh yeah we'll be doing this oh yeah maybe, maybe probably we'll be doing that and people took that as the gospel but i don't get that feeling from this team that's doing endless space 2 i think they've laid it out very nicely very specifically what they plan to do what's different between the beta and the their um, envisioned project product so I don't know if they're um, more 
sensitive to that because of what happened with No Man's Sky or if this is just their general operating procedure. But I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't a combination of both things where they're normally... I mean, they've done already one of these games. They've done a few of these endless type strategy games. So uh, it's not like they're new kids on the block. All right, so we got some stuff happening here. Empire Eliminated. Okay, the Voidiani Saint Chauvet AI has been eliminated. That must have been those destroyed ships that we saw. So, honestly, good riddance to those population suckers. Hero leveled up. Dominic Haven has gained experience. And I think we got another one. Yes. Kolstia Velm Omakar has also leveled up. So let's go to our hero management. All right. Uh, inspect Kolstia. Give her the old level up. She's got one skill point available. She's on a fleet. So do we give her the generic um, plus two experience plus one vision? Do we give her operations ability plus five percent fleet health plus five percent shield capacity? Or do we give her enhanced Estro Navigation, plus four vision range, three times free movement speed. Wow. Yeah, man, let's do that. That's her special skill, so let's boost that up. That's a pretty cool. All right, so close that. And now Dominic Haveni the second. He got his first skill point, I believe. Oh, no, he was already level four when I got him, so... Um, let's see what his special skills are. Overseer plus 10 food. Or plus 3 food plus 3 production. I think I'd rather have the bonus production as opposed to straight 10 food. I don't know that I need that in my life at the moment. Look at that cute little ship he's got. Alright, enough of that. Enough of that. Oops, all right, we've got to actually click done. I wish I wish these would go away automatically, but they don't. So more Rayans on Lanika. Lanika's got a ton of room, so that's good. Okay, we've got some construction queues available. Let's see what we can build here. Again, I don't want to just convert every... Sh every system into a uh, fleet building operation that's not going to do good for our pocket books so let's just go down the list of industrial upgrades crank some of those out Zayn oh they can be improved to a level 2 settlement so let's do that then go with the uh, I mean, you know, we'll just go with all of those. Might as well. Alright, so Keras built a battleship. That's good. They can't really build much of anything else. Um, go with the exotic rations. And then... Do I want to build another Predator? Yeah, I guess we'll build one Predator. One Predator per um, battleship, maybe. Just to give them a little escort. Alright, and then finally, we finished our fleet command. So now, we have plus one command per hull types on Empire. So... We can have bigger fleets now. This is good news. And what are we going to do? All right, let's... Uh, let's go with the relativistic empire so we can do the 
G Services Exchange. Trade Company Subsidiary. Trade. We have already got that one. 3D Printing and AI Labor. I don't necessarily need that stuff. We still have some level one tech we haven't gone through. Uh, yeah, we got lots of stuff to do still. Lots and lots of stuff. All right, uh, let's move our fleets. We didn't do that at the beginning of the thing, so now we got ships everywhere. Um. We got Reavers coming in this direction. Send a defender up there. Oops. Can he not move? Yeah, there he goes. All right, so there's now six ships here, but we now have nine fleet points. So we can merge these guys together. Boom. And we got room for a battleship, because I think a battleship is four. So let's oh, battle cruiser. Oh well I was gonna keep that one there. Where'd the battleship come from? Here it is. Alright, so you battleship, you are earmarked for this fleet. All right, so we're not going to get to see our new battleship in operation, but, uh, you know, at some point we will if this save doesn't get destroyed by the update. But I'm going to end it there. I'm going to end this week of Endless Space 2 just to uh, reiterate that I'm excited for this game to continue. Um, and uh, we'll see you then.